Hi everybody, welcome to South Olympic Branch update number 26. I'm sure I mentioned in a previous video that uh, I wanted to have an industrial area over here and to that end I needed a turnout uh, for it to go off of this line and up there and uh, I needed a number four well and have a number four turnout jig but uh, the uh, my division the fourth division of the Pacific Northwest region in the NMRA had a, a 4.5 jig for the uh, fast track stuff so I'm building my first 4.5 so far so good initially the plan was a little bit different now I've decided I wanted to put a turnout here. So I'm gonna cut this cork out of here so I can put a diverging route cork this way. Decided to go ahead and put the phone on the tripod so I could, so you guys could actually watch. Let's see, so this is, yeah, that's glued down good. Okay, so usually, and get there we go once you get it started there we go all right let's so, get that out of there before we get too excited about putting the replacement cork in there let's see if i did enough because i may not i may have not done enough I need to cut a little bit more it looks like so uh, let's do that yeah I decided to see if I could leave this remaining piece in here and see if that would actually work out for me it may not I may end up taking that out too but right now let's see what we got okay so that's a good start now let's grab that track and uh, put that back, put that in place here. Now, put that down, so drop this in, drop that in. Yeah, I think that's gonna work pretty good. And then we need to vacuum that out. And then I should be able to glue down the turnout pad. I've had this turnout pad for years. I just now found a use for it. <laughs> I actually forgot I had it. I'll put this, lay this down in here one more time. Back down there. Put my new turnout and it's a little bit of extension track that I have attached to it right now there. I think that's going to work pretty good. This little bit of flex track is going to have to, well, flex just a little bit because I want the turnout to swing to the right. And then after I get this laid out, I'm going to have to go over with some cork and then after the cork goes over, I can put this uh, this foam incline on top of that. Oh, come on, Aileen's. Let's glue this down. <laughs> All right, so here we go. Part one. Perfect. Let's see. Or at least good enough that nobody will be able to see the seams after I do what I'm going to do with the ballast and all that jazz. Okay. And I'll come back and I'll cut a hole in this cork for the um, for the turnout throw when I get its final position. Okay. So that's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. Okay. I'm going to move the turnout back a little bit and move the track out of the way. 
and the incline out of the way. And uh, let's see. Actually, don't want to do that quite yet, do I? I want to figure out exactly where that's going to go, if I can. You guys are probably looking at my arm right now. How exciting that must be for you. <laughs> All right, so let's see. So we've got that right there. And so I need to come in with the cork, bring it out here. Okay, I think, yeah, let's do that. Let's put it right there. And then I can draw that. With that drawn, I can figure out where I want that to land. And so we'll bring it out. And uh, that's gonna be like right there, right? Yeah, and then it'll be, then it'll pause, it'll go right up against, pretty much right up against that. And I'll actually cut down that foam a little bit so it's not as fat as it is right now. Um, maybe it's not fat, maybe it's too bone. Anyway, let's see. Let's take this thing. There we go. There we go. And um, so now what I'll have is this. And I think you guys probably can't see that. Right over here, I'll turn it this way a little bit. Move my glue bottle so you see where it's going to match up, meet up with that right there. So I'm just going to cut, mark that so I can cut it. And then, because we've got to maintain a certain curvature right here. I'm going to use the push pins this time. Um, so we'll do that. Now, this may seem a little sharp, um, but it does, it is just industrial track. So, you know, there might be some 50 foot box cars that come up here. Maybe I'll put refrigeration and stuff up here. So maybe 57. But I think that would be the longest equipment that is actually going to be coming up this, coming into this area. So nothing drastic, nothing super long. So. Okay. So. Cool. I'm going to take this next piece of short cork and I'm actually going to leave the the flat side out on this because there it doesn't make any sense to have ballasted roadbed down here when the track is going to be up there. So um, I'm going to just kind of figure out where I want that and glue it in place and pin it. And the reason there's going to be a big gap in between the pieces of cork, but that won't matter because the only reason this is here is to space the roadbed for the um, for it coming off the industrial siding or coming off the siding at the regular roadbed height, which may seem a little bit weird, but when when you see it when it's done, I think everybody would understand. That's probably going to be a long time because <laughs> people tell me I make good progress, but uh, yeah, it still seems like it will take a long time to get it done. Go ahead and pin this where I want it. That's pretty good. I'm not really measuring this, I'm sort of eyeballing it, which this particular thing that will work so okay we'll leave that and we'll see how it works out now with the glue dried and the uh, foam installed I've got some plaster cloth drying now 
and you get an idea of what the uh, what the grade up to the industrial area will look like. I mentioned earlier that this area wasn't uh, actually screwed down. I just did that because I'm going to be putting plaster cloth on the edge here next to uh, fill in the gap, just like I've been doing tonight down this way. And I've almost got it all the way filled in. And then I'll come back with some sculpta mold and give it some texture. Back over at the river, I started gluing down some more paving sand to fill in the rest of that area. Then, um, looking at the, at the gravel bar here that had dried, I decided the brown was too brown. And I had some folk art painted uh, pale gray I, which I diluted with about 60% water and went over the gravel there on this side. And I think it looks much more like the gravel bar that I'm picturing in my head of the Wainuichi River out in Grays Harbor County. I may go over it again because in person it's not as gray as it is in the video. And uh, I think I like that bet even better. Quite a bit more plaster cloth in and uh, I've also painted it as well. Probably not the final color we're going to get. Yeah, I'm going to have to go over some of this some more. I attended a Zoom meeting last night and it was the presentation was about some of the industrial spurs in downtown Seattle. And it gave me some thoughts, some ideas, sparked my creativity for this area, which I knew was going to be industrial anyway. So I cleared off some of the stuff I had up here. And I don't have an, I don't have any turnouts at all, really. Number four uh, turnouts made. So I printed out the uh, fast tracks, tracks uh, templates, quite a few of them. And I've been laying that out here. And I'm getting an idea of a industrial area that I think will be groovy to look at and fun to switch. And that will be up the grade from the main down there. Well, that's it, guys. See you next time. Thanks for joining me for episode number 26, and take care out there.